Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Uh, long time no see everyone. Uh, I haven't been very good at uploading content to this channel. I've been incredibly busy but now it's time for another video and I have changed the setup here a bit so at my computer here I have a new screen and I, I have a new setup for the camera and so on. Uh, so I hope that everything is okay. I still have some uh, work to do with the lighting here but you won't, uh, you won't get rid of the kitchen. That is still there. So those of you that are, have been complaining about the kitchen in the background, that will still be in the background. Um, <clears throat> in this video, I thought we would uh, do our own crypto collectible. Most of you know about the project CryptoKitties and there have been a lot of projects popping up everywhere where they use these ERC721 tokens in order to create a, uh, in order to create unique and non-fungible tokens called NFTs. And these have uh, proven to uh, be interesting for gaming. So a lot of people in the crypto space like to uh, purchase these different digital collectibles. And uh, usually people see it as an investment. The important thing is that the tokens are unique. So no two tokens are alike. And uh, that's the important thing. And in this video, I thought we would, uh, we would create our own token. And we won't do it from scratch. We will use the Open Zeppelin library and just configure the important parts ourselves. We don't have to code the entire ERC721 standard uh, from the beginning. We will uh, we will not reinvent the wheel. But uh, you'll need some tools for this video. Um, you will need an editor, and you will need npm in order to install the npm. Uh, sorry, the Open Zeppelin Solidity library. So that's what we're going to start with here. First, we'll make a new directory here. Uh, let's say crypto collectible. I haven't really figured out. Oh, sorry. I need to switch the screen here. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll make a new directory called crypto collectible. I haven't really figured out what we're going to exactly um, do yet with our collectible. But we'll see as we go along here. And here we'll have to do... Let's see. Do I need truffle? I don't know. I don't... Hmm. I don't think so. We'll just do npm init and click through all of these. And then we'll do npm install. Let's see here. Uh, here it is. Open Zeppelin dash Solidity. And let's just take the standard one. Open Zeppelin dash Solidity. <clears throat> and now we should have a folder here called node modules. And in that we'll have our Open Zeppelin open zeppelin contracts and <clears throat> once we have that we can go ahead and create a new file here so let's call this uh, well just, let's just call it crypto collectible dot salt <clears throat> and we will go into uh, this file in your editor so i will use atom and it's up to you whatever you want to use but let's see here mm -hmm. we'll open this up here we have it so our crypto collectible dot soul and we're going to start off here just as normal just select the solidity version we want to use 0 0.4.24 we'll use for this one and now we're going to import the file from open zeppelin that we want so open zeppelin dash solidity this is what we downloaded slash contracts slash token slash erc721 uh, slash ERC721 token point salt. So that's all we need to import. And then we're going to define our contract. And we're going to say here that, uh, well, what are we going to name it? I don't know. Uh, let's just name it, uh, mm, let's just name it collectible for now. If you have any name suggestions, leave them in the comments. We can create this together. Because I think this will be a continuous uh, video here. Because a lot of, a lot of, work when it comes to collectibles building the front end not the actual contract itself because the contract sure the, the tokens are unique but that's the only thing we need to make sure when we code our smart contract all of the interesting things from a gaming perspective or from the user perspective is how we choose to represent those unique characteristics in the web browser for example so crypto kitties they take these unique characteristics uh, like a dna and then they map that to certain visual aspects of the kitty so that's what you would do in the front end. So I think this will be a video series of some sort where we maybe can build out 
a front end as well if you guys are interested uh, you will let me know otherwise um, we might uh, just stay with the contract but we need uh, well let's not start with that let's just start with um, a constructor Cons constructor and this will first of all run the parent constructor here because we inherit from the ERC721 token and we'll run the ERC721 um, uh, constructor here and we need to figure out what the um, what the arguments that is so let's just go into open zeppelin contract and then it was token ERC721 ERC721 token and we can see that the constructor takes two arguments the name and the symbol so once again i don't have the name for this but uh, let's just for now call it collectible and then the symbol so if we're trading it we need a symbol and let's just say call it uh, col i hope that's not some sort of bad uh bad combination of words that means something else uh, but uh either way uh we don't need anything in our own constructor all we need to do right now is to run the parent constructor here that will actually create our token so we can leave this empty oops like so and then we need uh, a function called mint or oh, no, not like that mint like that and it needs to be public so this is what we call when we want to create a new unique or non-fungible token and this can be um this can be um, only for the owner if we want to. Now we don't have the owner library installed, but that is also in the Open Zeppelin library if you want. So maybe only the owner of this contract should be able to create new tokens, but I will leave this open so anyone can create a new unique token. And the, the question now becomes, what will the actual unique ID, how will that be created? Because we're going to call an internal function in the ERC721 token contract that is called underscore mint since it's internal. And here we want to specify the owner. So that will be the message.sender. And then we need to specify an ID here. So some sort of ID. And this ID needs to be unique. This is what sets each, each token apart from each other. And then this ID should, should you, usually represent some sort of uh, property of this token as well. And... As I said, I haven't really thought of any any good properties of this token. So I thought that maybe we would just do a sort of pseudo random color token. So this uh, collectible, this unique token, they will all have uh, a unique color to it. So you would uh, you would get a color when you mint it from the timestamp. It's not random, but it has it has some variance to it at least. Uh, and uh, then that will be assigned an ID, and that ID will be put into this function. So let's do that. And for that, we need a struct called color, and this will take three. Um, this will have three fields. It will be red. It, oh, sorry. So this will represent the RGB color mapping, so we can have any color we want, and we'll have green and then we'll have blue so these all are 8-bit 8-bit 8 8 um, integers and this will be able to represent all the colors in the rgb color span whatever you call it then we also need an array that holds a bunch of these color objects we'll call that array or array for colors and then in the min function, we need a way to create a new color object. So color, uh, and we'll need to put that in memory. And we'll call this underscore color is equal to, so a new color. So this is the constructor of the struct, if you will. And then we need three parameters. And I thought we would base this upon the now variable, which is the current block timestamp. And then we will uh, cast that into a uint8. So now will be a long, I think 256 bit timestamp, and then we'll cast that into a uint8 um, integer. So we would have a, um, 
a uh, representation of that timestamp, but as a an amount of red, green, or blue. And then here we'll do the same thing. You int eight. Then now, and we can take like any number here. So let's say minus a thousand, just to get some variance. I don't know if it's gonna make any big difference, but we'll take now minus five thousand five hundred. Let's just do that. And then we need to add this to the array, and from that we'll get an ID. So bear with me here, we'll do colors.push. And here we'll add the color object, and this will return an ID. Colors.push, that will return the current length of the array. But since we, uh, you know, for, for the purpose of, you know, education, let's just say we start from zero, because when we add the first color to this array, the length will be one. And that means we won't start from zero. So let's just take minus one here. So we'll start from zero and we'll work our way up. So now we've saved uh, the color in the array and we have an ID from that array and we'll, we'll create a token with that ID. And that also means that we can actually map from a token back to a color because we'll need that. The token just holds the ID. We need a way in order to map from a token ID to a color. So that we then in the front end actually can take that color and read it. So we need an another function. This is the last function. Get color from ID. And this will take an ID. That's the token ID. And it will be public. It will be view. That means it's a getter. And it will return three things. It will return three integers. Who would have thought? And it will return the... <clears throat> Colors, which is the array, and then the ID, and then we will have dot red, and then we'll do the same thing here. So let's just copy this, and this will be the green, and this will be the blue. So that's what we're going to return. I will return um, all of these three integers, and that is it for our contract. Once that is done. We can actually go ahead and deploy it just to try it out. And for that, um, I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to do it in Remix, I think, because that's just easier and more visual for you guys. And that means that I'm going to use a tool called Truffle Flattener. I think it's called Truffle Flattener. And here I can input a file here that I want to use. So we'll do Crypto Collectible and then I want to uh, output that to a file called output.sol and this will take all of the dependencies so this uh, token contract and all of the dependencies in that contract and just add it to the same file so that's what I'm going to do here <clears throat> and now I remember why I wanted truffle so let's just do a quick fix here so let's do let's see uh, make make a directory inside here called truffle directory and we'll go into that and we'll do truffle init and then we will go back and we will and we will move everything into truffle directory Let's see. And let's see if this works. If we go back here, we should have all of our truffle files and we'll see if that works as I expected. We'll see. Uh, do, 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 do. Truffle flattener. Uh, do, 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 do I need to be in the... Let's see here. Probably... Let's see. I'll put there we have it. Looks like it's working. Uh, and let's just um, copy all of that. And now we can go to Remix. So once we're here, we can just uh, paste all of our code into here. And do, 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 do. Oh, I didn't even see, I didn't even compile it to see if we had any errors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we need to specify ERC721 token. 
let's just see there we go we should have compiled it before uh, but let's see if we can deploy this we'll take collectible that was the name of our contract hit deploy and here we have it let's attempt to mint this so let's hit the mint and that means that we should have a new collectible with id zero right so let's just see exists this will check if a token with that id exists id zero it exists awesome let's uh, check the owner of a token zero. Oh, that is me you can see the address up here that's good and let's see if we can get the uh, the color so get color from id zero let's see which color we got okay so we got 70 red we got uh, 94 green and 202 blue and uh, i don't know what color that is mostly blue i guess but if we do it again mint again and let's see if we get the same color maybe we do no the timestamp changed okay good so um that's really everything i wanted to show for this video now every token here is unique and they have a unique property or semi unique property called color and we can continue this uh, series of nft if you like so we can maybe create a front end and uh, see how we can represent this color out to the user but i want to thank you for watching and please hit that like button if you uh, enjoyed this video and if you're not already subscribed please hit, the, hit that subscribe button it really helps me out a lot uh, i appreciate every one of you watching if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and i will try to uh, answer them there all right thanks for watching guys i will see you in the next video